You probably have heard terms like SSG, SSR, ISR, CSR and things like that. Well, these are all different kinds of rendering techniques that we have available in Next.js. And by the end of this video, you will have a very clear idea about all of these rendering methods and when to use each of them. So rendering is this process of converting your code into user interface and depending upon how you have written your code and few other condition, this rendering could either take place in the client side or server side. Now here's the most important thing. All of these methods that I'm going to be explaining in this video just represents when and where the rendering is going to be happening. Client side rendering is simple. Browser makes a request to server. Server then sends some HTML along with some JavaScript. And then this JavaScript gets executed in the browser and then builds out the entire page. So this is called client side rendering. But in case of server side rendering, rendering happens on the server. Now, when this rendering happens in case of server side rendering, depends upon a few number of things. So if rendering happens in build time, it is either SSG or ISR. SSG basically stands for static site generation and ISR is incremental static regeneration. But when this rendering happens on every request, we can call it as dynamic rendering. So let's try to understand each of these rendering techniques one by one with practical examples and also why do these even exist? And most importantly, what problem each of these techniques solve? Interesting thing about Next.js is that we can use a combination of all of these different rendering techniques. And what I mean by that is some part of your application can render on the client side and some part of your application can render on the server side, right? In Next.js app router, every component is a server component by default. That means the rendering for all of these components and pages happens on the server side. If you want to implement client side rendering for any particular component, you'll just have to use this special directive at the top of your file, use client. This tells Next.js that you want this component to be rendered on the client side. So let's see what I'm doing here. First, I'm basically importing a few important things, use state and use effect from React. I'm also importing this image from next image. As soon as this component gets mount, I'm basically making a request to this dog API. And if we do not have the data, we are showing this loading HTML element. And if we have the data, we are showing this image. Now remember in the beginning, I told you that in case of client side rendering, browser makes a request to the server. Server then sends a very bare bone HTML along with an attached JavaScript file. And this JavaScript file then gets executed in the client side, in this case, the browser, which basically renders out the entire content of the page. And we can see this in the browser. So if I just go to network tab, I'll disable the catch and I'll switch my network mode to slow 3G. If I just refresh this page, you'll notice that first we are getting this loading HTML element. And then inside of this use effect, we basically made a request. We are waiting for that data. And then as soon as the data appears, we basically render out the image. So this is client side rendering. There is just two main problem with client side rendering. First of all, it has poor SEO because search engines struggle to index JavaScript render content. And the second thing is that in some of the cases, if your application is a little bit complex, the initial page load can be slower because the browser has to download and execute JavaScript before rendering the entire content of the page. Server side rendering do not have these problems as the content is fully rendered on the server before being sent to the client. And because of that, we get faster initial load times and very good SEO. So consider this example. Now this is a server component. That means the rendering for this page now happens on the server side. Since all of this code is first going to be executed on the server side. So what this means is that whenever I get a request to this particular route, I will first fetch the data from this resource, then render out the entire content and then send back a complete HTML response. And this time when I refresh the page, we are actually getting the entire HTML from the very beginning itself. But server side rendering has its own problems. It can be slower for dynamic content because the server needs to render the page on each request. And since because server is rendering the page on each request, there would be a higher server load in case of server side rendering. So to fix the issues of both client side rendering and server side rendering, SSG was introduced, which is basically static site generation. With static site generation, SSG, pages are pre-rendered at build time. For example, if I try to make a build of this project, you will notice that Next.js is also generating a lot of static pages. So this is called static site generation. Next.js is trying to render page at build time. Because of this, we get excellent SEO. We also get faster initial load times. 
And since HTML is pre-rendered at build time, these can be served as static files, which basically improves the performance of your application. But SSG is still not suitable for highly dynamic content that changes frequently because the content is fixed at build time. And then if you want to update the content of your website, you basically have to rebuild the entire application again. One very useful use case for a static site generation is when you're trying to build a blog or something. So consider this example. In the home page, I'm basically getting all of the posts and then rendering these in the home page, as you can see over here. When I click on any of these posts, I go to a different page, the slug of my post, my first post, and then it shows the content for this particular post. Now you could imagine that there would be a lot of pages, maybe hundreds and hundreds of pages like this. Inside of the post slug page, I'm just getting the post slug and then I'm finding the post based on this slug and then rendering the content for this particular post, which you can see over here. Now at this time, if I try to build my application, you will notice a few interesting things. First of all, you will notice that this home page has been statically generated. This not found page has also been statically generated. But how do I know these two pages have been statically generated? If we scroll a little bit downwards, you can see next just basically tells you if there's a circle to the left side, that essentially means that that page has been pre-rendered as static content. But if it has a symbol like this, that means that that page is going to be rendered every time a request comes, which is happening for the post slug page. So what this means is that every time I come here, refresh this page or someone tries to access this post, we will re-render this page in the server and then send back that response. If you think about this, this is not very good in terms of performance standpoint because the content of this page is not going to be changing very frequently. So what if we tell next years that for all these pages in which the content are not going to be changed very frequently, you generate them at the build time only. So inside of this post slug page, I can export this async function generate static params. And what this is essentially doing is that this is just getting the post and then we are just returning this object which basically contains the slug for that post. And the reason why we are returning just the slug because this is what we use to render the post in the post slug page. So now when I try to make a build of my application, you will see that now post slug page has a filled circle left on the left side to it. And you can see that all of these pages have now been generated as in static site generation. So what this means is that now in the production server, whenever I'm trying to access any of my post, all of these pages will be sent out to me very, very fast because the server does not have to render these again. So this is a static site generation. Since now we are generating the pages at build time, this has its own problems. For example, this is not suitable for highly dynamic content that changes very frequently as the content is basically fixed at build time only. So in order to update the content of the website, you'll have to basically rebuild the project again. ISR, which basically stands for incremental static regeneration, is an improved version of SSG. So what ISR allows you to do is to basically generate pages statically at the build time, but it also enables updates at runtime. And what I mean by that is ISR combines the benefits of SSG, which is basically faster initial load times and good SEO with the ability to update content without a full rebuild. So this is suitable for those type of content that needs periodic updates. So let's see this in action. So in order to tell Next.js that it should use incremental static regeneration for any particular route segment, you will have to export this constant called revalidate. So inside of this home page, I'm basically exporting this constant called revalidate and setting its value to 10 seconds, which basically means every 10 seconds just to re-render the page and get the latest information. And in order to show this clearly, I'm making a request to this JSON placeholder type code post URL, which basically gives me the latest post. So first, let's see what happens when we do not export this revalidate. So if I just comment out this, come here, make a build, start the production server, come to home page and we can see all of these posts over here. And I can click on any of these and I'll see my post details. Now, the thing is, every time I refresh this page, I am always going to be getting this same content only no matter what. So as you can see, I'm basically refreshing this page multiple times and I am getting the same data. Now let's go back and export this constant called revalidate. I'll again make the build, start the production server. And now if I come to home page and refresh this page, you can see that I'm getting the, these posts. But if I keep refreshing this page, 
you'll see that I'm getting different posts after every 10 seconds. So this is called incremental static regeneration. It basically renders the page at build time, but it also gives you this flexibility of getting the latest data at runtime in a periodic basis. However, this is still not ideal for those type of content that needs to be updated in real time or personalized for each user. For example, within your application, you have a section called dashboard. So that dashboard is going to be specific for every user. So for those type of scenario, you cannot render all of these pages in advance, right? So for those cases, you can basically use dynamic server side rendering, which basically renders the page on each request. And the way you would do that is by exporting a constant called dynamic and setting its value to force dynamic. This tells next year is that no matter what happens, you have to re-render this page every time whenever a request comes. So as you can see that this time our home page has been converted to a dynamic server side rendering. So if I just start the production server, go here, refresh the page. I should be getting different posts every single time as I refresh this page. But the problem with dynamic server side rendering is that, that this is still slower than static site generation and incremental static regeneration. And server would be on higher load as the page has to be rendered every single time whenever the request comes. Okay, so we basically understood few things at this point. And the most important thing is that you cannot choose which method is best because it entirely depends upon your particular use case. For example, if you want to build a highly interactive and dynamic web application, then client side rendering is the best option for that. If you want a better SEO and faster initial load performance, you could go with server side rendering, right? But if you want the combined benefits of server side rendering with the efficiency of serving static content that we basically get from client side rendering, you can opt for static site generation. And then if you want to address the limitations of static site generation and you also want your content to be updated on a periodic basis, you can use incremental static regeneration for that. And finally, if you want your page to be rendered every single time, there is dynamic server side rendering for that. All right. That's all for this video. If you find this video helpful in any way, do subscribe to my YouTube channel, like this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.